Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Hello Charlotte. Previously, we had some dream adventures. They were really sad because they all got really existential on us. <coughs> Are you alright? It's nothing, don't worry. I just need to wash my face, that's all. Today, too, we'll get up, go to school, and go back to sleep. To the bathroom. I don't like this. Hi, you're uh, occupying my bathroom. Bennett? So that's what you look like, Bennett. You look normal. Well, comparatively. Oh, it's just you. Hi. It's rare seeing you without the mask. No wonder you like to eat people. You look like, kind of like a carnivore. It's easier to blend with the crowd in it. And safer, considering the environment I work in. Does your face still hurt? A bit, but not much. Not to the point of being unable to sleep, anyway. Ever since Henry removed the eyes from my internal organs, I've been just fine. Oh yeah, those those internal organ eyes. Definitely gotta get those removed. They're, they're practically useless. I mean, they can't see anything. <laughs> Apparently, these orbs don't like when the soap gets into them. You need to use a sink, right? Uh, yes. I've been coughing up ink lately. Ink, huh? Maybe you should collect it. We can make a fortune on selling ballpoint pens. <laughs> Alrighty, I have to run. Gotta finish my business in the violent room before Game of Chairs starts. Reference. Puns. Bennett, seemingly satisfied with his financial proposal, leaves the bathroom. I wash my mouth and face until the ink stains have become barely visible. Now that's better. I suddenly like Bennett better, but now that he has a face. Because now I understand his character, just by looking at it. Oh, right. There's something I want to get before we go to school. Felix. It's open. Hi, how you doing? This is the violent room. It's pretty violent. But it seems occupied. Sure. I raise my voice. Bennett? Bennett suddenly turns around with a chainsaw still in his hands. Wow. Gee, wonkers. Before I know it, my insides spill on the floor. Man, don't startle me like that. No one ever reads warning signs these days, do they? The bad end. Do not disturb. We came. We saw. We died. Hi. You ready to admit like you actually somewhat care about me? Good morning. I know that look. Do you need something? Well, yes. Do you have a spare pair of gloves? Oh? What for? A friend. Well, not a mutual friend, but an irrequited friend. Rather. Don't tell me it's that god guy. Yes. He doesn't like germs, apparently. The god has misophobia, huh? Why am I even surprised? Here you go. Thank you. Yes, yes, what a wonderfully helpful person I am. Now mind your business, I'm trying to find a cure for you. See you later. Let's just warp the school. But before that, let's have some social link dialogue. There's no social link dialogue to be had, let's go. That's a TV, that's not my room. Here we go. That's the wrong cube. No! Okay, here we go. Okay, let's find our... Classmate. He's not here. Hmm. Lunchroom? 
You know, you, you, you claim you're a god, but you're surprisingly difficult to find. Charlie? Henri? Henri practically throws herself at me. A wide smile is plastered on her face. Hi. I've missed you. Hey, hey. Let's go feed the mad cats before class. The stray ones? So the rumor's true? Yes. They're in the garden. Come on, let's buy them food. Although I forgot my wallet again. That's really coincidental. It's okay. I can buy it. Really? What a relief. Let's go, let's go. All right, lead the way. Just have to find C later. Let's go into that garden down there. First, we gotta buy some food. It's in this lunchroom. Oh, I barely have any money. It's okay, let's sell for the cheap stuff then. Feed them mag cats. They have junk food. Too cheap. Look, it's a mad cat. Meow. Meow. Aww. <laughs> mad cats nuzzle against my hands. No need for formalities. I'm just a mere human. Not really. I bring out the snacks we brought. Today's special flavor is failure and impending doom. Oh man, I love that shit. I have that stuff on weekends. Sometimes Mondays. Mad cats hastily eat with eagerness. Good cats. Let's visit them the next time, too. Sure. Now then, let's go back and change for PE class, shall we? Oh, sorry. There's something I have to do before the lessons start. But I'm here. Whatever business can you have? It won't take long. I promise. Is that so? Well then. Go on. I won't wait for you. Thanks, you're a great friend. And where are you, buddy? You're in the ball pit. That's where all the cool kids usually go. Nope, don't go in the principal's room. The mystery floor. Hi. I made a good guess. C puts down a book he was reading when he sees me. Hi there. Uh, hello? Busy? Sort of. I'm gathering information on this world. My memories are incredibly out of order, which is a great inconvenience. But all I could find were illustrated manuals for express weight loss, and lists of ways to become a billionaire by clicking pop-up ads. Oh, I know that technique. There's also a collection of must-read classics that nobody will ever read. Tragedy of the Commons. It hardly helped the organization of my mindscape. But was an entertaining read anyway. Perhaps the school library is in the place you should turn to. Yes, perhaps I should have taken the leaflets or heading on my way here. If you want knowledge on sales in supermarkets, then absolutely. Oh, why don't I give you my notes? I hastily bring out the Book of Truth out of my bag. It's just my theories and observations, though. They're a bit silly. Here, you can have it. C reaches out and only stop midway. His breathing hitches. Sorry. I can't accept it, after all. Why so? Oh, because it's not clean, right? I'm really sorry. Don't worry about it. How about I tell you everything I know? Ah, uh, that'd be kind of you. And it's a promise. There's something I could give you in return. You don't have to, really. I want to. Here! I write stories, you see. Just like me. Perhaps you'll find it interesting. You can throw it away after you read it. Will do. Don't worry, I'll keep it. No, we won't. Oh, I almost forgot. I bought you these. I hand the gloves to C. You said you didn't like touching things, did you? C looks dumbfounded for a moment. Are these for me? Do you see someone else here? No, it's just... Thank you. You really didn't even have done so much for me. Don't say that. I'm happy to be of help to you. Sorry, I have to run. We have PE class today. See you, see. Gotta run. By holding shift. 
Gotta hit the save point, just in case. Am I supposed to be here? I mean, I am a puppeteer, but still. Something's off here, Seth. Oh, you mean the giant meat crow for all over the place? I thought that was normal. There's a locking sound in the distance. It's really locked. It must be that teacher accidentally locked me in. Meat! Meat! No! I'm trapped! No! The oddities push me down to the ground. As they rip apart my body parts, I cough out in a considerable amount of ink-black manner. Just what... Is this... I I'm suffocating... Isn't there... Somebody... Ink kept... And kept flowing out of my mouth, completely flooding the room. In a moment, all went to black. Some black ink. Shire... Wake up, sleepyhead. Frey? Finally awake, I see. Just look at this warped reality bummer. A reality marble? The universe is expanding. Am I dreaming? Not this time. You're perfectly awake. But you're here. Do believe me. I'm as puzzled as you are. I see. They say, going through the looking glass is a classic symbol for disassociating from reality. Does that apply to you, too? I don't know. Maybe we need to get you on my body. I'm pretty sure to be healthy. Oh well. Maybe I'm teasing you too much. Anyhow, it doesn't look like we'll be leaving anytime soon. I wish there was something to read. You're the type to read labels in food stores, huh? Might as well be. So, what shall we do? Feeling adventurous, yet? Well, my spare than sitting here. Let's look around. Triple face mirror. Use. Welcome to the party. Hope you enjoy yourself. Welcome to the world of Eeb. How do we get here? Oh, you, you know. Paintings. There's a red switch behind the mirror. Use it. Red switch activated. All right, that's just... A white switch. And we're back to the beginning. Nope, we're free. Okay. It's like a museum of the mind. Quite literally. Which number? One? So number two looks kind of like a face. So there's number three. You know, if you don't like thick and lateral figures, but more of a theoretical, metaphorical 4D sense. Looks kind of like a face. Five. Isn't that the Cattell's intelligence test? Seems fairly easily. I've passed one before. I'll leave it to you. Is this where I put in the solutions? Oh. Okay. <coughs> Super sorry, your IQ is too low for the next test. Wow! Well, we know what this puzzle is now. Use it to form the... The thing of fun and the thing of fun. Sure. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is. It's pretty rough. We're on 729. 
Those numbers mean nothing to me at the moment. They lies. What do the numbers mean? Almost confusing as I'm meaning that dog. Mirror to the reflection room, input number, not the app. Mirror spin of ink, there's no way back. We just leave ink wherever we go. Six four two nine nine. Am I supposed to go for each one and see which one which room like says the same number every time? Is this one of those like very tedious puzzles? It's where one five six nine three. B seven four four five five one six nine nine three six three nine one. Well, let's see if we see like a repeating pattern. One five six nine three three four five seven five. They all have the same number. So it's number. Which number is different then? Damn. You bastards! The writing was on the walls, quite literally. See the past and you'll see the future. Memory one, feminine, go in the mirror. Individuality. Decomposition. Dear girl, I've seen your eyes sparkle when you saw this dress in the making. Want to try it on? I don't think I'm cut out for dresses, Aiden. Why so? What I see before me is a fair young lady. But when did a dress suit you? Look, it looks like it was made to be worn by you. So wear it proudly. Okay, I'll try to. Also, you should let your hair grow. Wouldn't it look weird? Believe me, it wouldn't. You'll make a wonderful lady when you grow up. Memory end. Whoa. Uh -oh. This is getting pretty deep on me now. Yeah, this is... Oh, you're flattering me. No, no, it's my pleasure. What, you want to hear about Pythias again? Such a curious drone you are. Well, well, the Pythias, the ancient race. The females of our kind go by the name Freya. Males are also called Frey. Where we always just meet dolls. Mere containers for the Oracle. No, we weren't. Never were. When the Oracle appeared, the world divided into two fractions. The globalists, who won their minds to become one of everyone, and the individualists, who were against that. We, the individualists, started the god hunt to get rid of the oracle and the globalists alike. Why would you ask? To prevent the death of ego. Death of indiv individuality would have meant death of all creativity and culture, and we want to prevent that by all means. But globalists were stronger. They outnumbered us and gave their egos for the Oracle to take on a silver planner. They've accepted the Oracle. That's when individuals start to commit mass suicides, refusing to give in. Our downfall began quickly, so we ran like cowards. Isolated ourselves in the world just to see ourselves to the very end. No wonder many went crazy. We became paranoid of every sound in the space we inhabited. So we've built traps, mazes, puzzles, everything to hold back the intruders. I can beg you not to hold grudges on any of us. We're a sick, sick nation. And I feel like the end is soon, my loyal friend. Or perhaps it's already come, and all that was left were recordings of our former glory. Simulations of existence. Who knows, perhaps that little misintruder will bring about our end. It's always something small that causes big things to happen. Remember the little drone. The living beings. Oracle's no god. It's nothing more than a parasite of our minds. While it seemingly granted our wish to connect, it was what destroyed us. 
The irony is that it probably isn't even aware of what it's doing. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh god. Not you. But like, more of like a war of a, you know, oh shit sense. So that's the boy you've modeled my appearance after. Curious. Are they true? The things he said? Who knows? I barely possess any memories of my life before I woke up in your mind. That is why you can trust me, Miss Wiltshire. I am not your enemy. Oh, okay, I'll trust the hive mind thing over here of the giant tentacles and meat. I want to believe you, Frey, but it seems like I don't know you at all. Decomposition. We're back? Thanks, science! <laughs> Charlotte! Hey! Wake up! Don't play dumb! Oh god, the Oracle! She's... decomposing! No, no. This can't be happening. Wasn't the Oracle supposed to be dead? You know, Miss Wiltshire. Yes? I had a thought there. Which may have also been your thought, but that's beside the point. Maybe Mr. Hanukkah started distancing himself from you because he became afraid of you. Felix is not a coward. Is that so? Then perhaps afraid is a strong word. He's just not sure if it's you anymore. You turned into a lump of meat right before his eyes. Wouldn't anyone have suspicions? Perhaps you're right. We can't go back to those days anymore. Three sighs. It's all because you took pity on me. And now you're doomed to face the consequences. That's all there is. You're up, Pete. But you're pretty happy you're possessing my body, huh? Particle manipulating mirror. Two effects available, it says. Misuse. Warping effect on. Gifting mirror. Okay. Don't you misuse the gifting mirror. It's a bad idea. But also I'm trapped. Seriously, I'm trapped. Eat the candy. I ate the candy. Tastes like chicken soup. Nice. Do I dare? I didn't question it. It worked. It's fine by me. Dang it! Never trust the mystery mirror. That's why you never go for the mystery box. Let's not question the questioning mirror. Which er period was earlier? The paleo diet. It's the best diet. I honestly don't know much about diets. I'm just saying that because it reminds me of it. It's the... Uh, it's the mirror of the mirrors. Just use it. I wake up to someone opening the door. Hi. Oh, so you were here. As I thought. It was weird that you never appeared after your class. Where'd you get the keys? Surprisingly, all the doors opened for me. Huh, as expected from God. Is something wrong? No, why? You're crying. I must have startled you. Huh? Why is it, I wonder? Maybe I'm just a little tired. Here. The boy stretches out his hand with a paper tissue in it. I felt red flowers bloom in my hands as I wiped my cheeks. The wounds are healing? Thank you, C, for coming to help. You're welcome. You should go ahead of me. There's something I need to take. My heart? 
I don't mean that in, like, we're shipped together way. I mean that in, like, more like your evil way. All right. Take care. Now what do I do in my life? Do I go to class? I don't have a task. Oh look, it's a beheaded student, I gotta socialize with him. Hey, smile. Doesn't work, he doesn't see me. It's all gonna be alright, buddy. We reassure you. <laughs> Oh, thanks! Let's talk about schoolwork that you're not gonna be able to do because you're, you know, disemboweled. Thanks! You know, that's great! I like that. Goodbye. You're very nice. You're also dead. Oh boy. I'll just go home then. Not sleepy yet. So who should I talk to? Hi hey guys, what's going on? Ow, 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 ow. You murdered me. Can't you be more gentle? Stop complaining when this wound is your fault to begin with. Save me from this monster, you and maggot. This monster is the one saving you right now, Bennett. Can you imagine? A specimen on my table got bitten by a mutant spider. Now he's doomed to have his leg covered in necrosis bites. Aren't you gonna treat it? If you're gonna blabber, I'm gonna amputate it. But it's just a bite! I'm not to interrupt, but... Does that mean there are spiders in the house? It's alright. Ah, that! One of our workers accidentally broke the glass of a mutant terrarium. So we're still dealing with the consequences. But are we not? It should be clean by now. I think. Please don't move so much. But it's itchy. I'll stab you with a fork if you do. Yes, sir. I can't tell if the eyes are just... Like your whole facade kind of falling off, or if that's actually part of your biology. Hi. Hello, I didn't... Been busy? Good day. With a dress I made in collaboration with Henry. We call it Dark Matter Dress. Or the amount of actual dark matter in it is non existent. Want to try it on? Sure. It takes any form you want it to take. Pretty handy, right? For now, it changes only the shape. But we're looking for a way to make it change its structure as well. A pair of extra hands or a particle bomb spawned from clothing wouldn't be so bad, right? That'd be pretty awesome. Pretty anime. I guess so. It's cool. You can have it. Thank you, Aiden. I'll cherish it. Here we go. Where of care. Let's see who else is around. How you doing? Heard you got like spiders everywhere. Dr. Huxley cuts a body on his table in half. Oops, missed the membrane over here. Hello, little chalet. Would you mind helping me for a bit? Sure, Dr. Huxley. What is it? I need you to carry this to the morgue room. My dear crew members will aid you in it. Two crew members turn up, Baldwin and Goodwin, as told by their name badges. Man, we're seeing everyone unmasked. They greet me in unison. Alright. Inform me if the corpse will start moving on your way. Yes, sir. Hi, Baldwin. Goodwin. How you doing? What's the morgue room again? Like, that's not the morgue room. Actually... This is the morgue room. All done. Yay! Bye-bye, Charlotte Wilshire. 
That was uncomfortably polite. Bye bye, you two. The workers leave shortly, returning to work. And that was easy. Where's my reward? Oh, you're gone. Okay. Now what do I do in my life? It's rare to see workers in the library. Hi! Hello, Florence. You look pretty today. Heh, <laughs> thanks! Thanks for helping me the other day. It's so weird seeing you all without suits. I have bought something in return. Florence brings out a small cube. It's my Bennett blackmail logs. I've extracted some memories from his brain while he was asleep. Man, he really should cut down on soap. It makes him so hyperactive he sleeps like a log afterwards. I've already made the spare copies of this, so perhaps one of these cubes will be useful to you. Thank you, but... Wouldn't you have trouble sleeping when Bennett finds out? Hm. He can come find me anytime. Okay, then. Everyone's just kind of relaxing and chilling. It's nice. Use a memory cube? Sure. Let's take a look. Memory cube side A. I live a very funny life. The planet I was born on had two races living on it. Humans and overmen. We looked the same, yet our roles in society were completely different. I was born as a designer baby in the laboratory of human resources. A bee rank born to live on nutritional soap as a lab rat for testing cosmetics. All for the sole purpose of a sticker saying safe for skin, approved by leading dermatologists, on a tiny tube of cream. Oh wow, this is... A gag character just got really heavy on me. Bee types are good looking and have good stamina. They're using commercials, movie industry, and medical tests. A ranks are the smart ones. They are fated to participate in intelligence tests, and surprisingly parapsychology. We had this Paul guy appearing on TV all the time, predicting match results and making weather forecasts. He died of overworking. C types are the living stock. They're used for mass producing meat products and candles. Pieces of closing sometimes, but it's banned in most areas thanks to some activists. So I guess maybe you were all. So you're not quite your alien in a sense, but there was humans, or at least humanoids, on your planet, and I guess all of you are experimental designer humans. Coordinators or something. D types of the workforce. They said the most dangerous places like nuclear stations, shafts, and such. Then there was E type, who uses pets. In our department, a special achievement system was developed for us to stay motivated. We all collected MP, which stands for Motivation Points. Gee, I wonder what's a reference to. MP would be traded for rewards and eventually a promotion to a higher rank. The goals were simple. Tough one, smile when it hurts. Ten smiles out of sixty collected. Best buddy, if your friend is feeling ill, report immediately. Five reports out of ten collected. After somebody was reported and they never came back. I collected the most MP I could. I wanted to get out. Be among A ranks. And the promotion day came. When I moved to the other department, I didn't have to test cosmetics anymore. I would become a test subject for medicine instead. To be purposely infected with a skin disease and have all kinds of treatment tested on me. So that's why you look like that. My hair fell off. It grew back. My bowels were full of ulcers after I took an experimental drug. They were restored. I vomited and vomited and vomited. All food turning sour in my stomach. It felt like my insides would come out from my esophagus. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. I feel like the promotion is really a system of who's the most loyalist and willing to do anything and you get promoted to a worse position because only the most loyalist and most mentally strong will be able to handle it. A weird semi-loyal betrayal. One day I was accidentally infected with eye plague. 
An incurable illness made eyes grow on my both skin and internal organs of the infected. Naturally, I was scheduled for disposal. I spent a month in isolation, thinking it was the happiest time of my life. The disposal day came. Where's side B? Hey, yo. A person in a lab coat came in, looking too young to be an executioner. Hi there. Nice to meet you. I'm Henry Huxley. I know you're scheduled for disposal, which by lucky coincidence is today. Well, it's been cancelled just an hour ago. Just when I sign up papers for your ownership. Sounds better than dying, doesn't it? Oh god. I'd have to be dead, Mr. Huxley. <laughs> is that sarcasm I'm hearing? Oh yes, he must have stopped giving you intellect suppressants, but they are not cheap. It would be such a waste to give them that effective specimen, am I right? You know, I'm researching eye plague. Yes, yes, the uncurable eye plague. Which I'm going to cure. And you, my dear, are going to become the face of my success. You see, it's the first time a beat I've gotten infected. You're too valuable of a material. And it's the fact that your specimen are most beautiful of all types, as you're constantly using commercials. So it would have been an exaggeration if I said that you were chosen for a pretty face. And timing. Timing was also crucial. Just recently I realized that I have less than half a year to complete my feces. And that's a little troubling. You madman. Yes, I am. Why not? We'll become the stars of the modern time. Science bless us. The meeting marked the beginning of our alliance, and people started dying in the name of science. Huxley's utter lack of empathy for both overmen and men alike was for that reason he was the most successful among his peers. He brought me different books. One of them was Dummy's Guide to Cooking. A good part of it was dedicated to cooking meat. If an animal died in stress, it meat, its meat would be hard to chew, it said. It's like the logic behind those cows. Aside from regular intakes of soap, my diet consisted primarily of various greens and products high in protein, meat included. One day, I decided to ask. What kind of meat is this? I inquired from Huxley, who was vigorously waving his hands in the air. As I've learned later, he was using VR environment to work. Of C type, of your kind, I believe, he answered, not turning away from work. The greatest delicacy of our time. Truly really a feast of gods. Feel like vomiting yet? He added, generally curious. No. I took another bite. The meat was incredibly tough. We can see someone got murdered. Huxley brought me books and taught me reading and writing. He regularly tested my physical capabilities, so I was kept in good physical form. He talked too much. Spent too much time with me than he should have. The day Henry Huxley cured eye plague was the day he told me to get into the cadaver pouch and declared me dead to the whole scientist society. What's happening, I've asked. We're leaving, was the short answer. As it turned out later, researching eye plague was just a facade. What Henry Huxley was actually testing were the capabilities of a human specimen. Only to confirm that men and overmen were no different from each other all along. As we boarded his spaceship, he began quickly explaining that we are a threat to society. That he found a cure from eye plague long ago. And now he only used it as an excuse for doing other projects. That we need to find a new home. You know, with the, the Oracle world, and these aliens and everything, um, I'm sure this series, the first one, kind of was a... kind of a parody of surreal RPG Maker games. And now it's kind of got like its own storyline, like they fleshed everything out. And it, this was kind of foreshadowed a little bit in the first one, but it was kind of dropped. But it seems like it's... We're dealing with like multiple Orwellian, um, like H.G. Wells, like all these kinds of writers, you know, some science fiction, um, some more political, and all their kind of theoretical worst case scenarios, like all these other universes are them. So this whole storyline is really about the human condition, social anxiety, and society. That's in a sense. 
We pinned all the money we needed on the day we arrived in the house. That's how we ended up living there. <laughs>